Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Um, big hello to the new subscribers. Thank you for joining us. Well, we are going to get back on this Mercury, but I was looking at this thing overall, and, uh, no, oh, that's heavy. So I got to thinking, when you see a prop like that, Mm-hmm. guy. When you see a prop like that, instead of worrying about buttoning up this hood just right now, because we'll get that. We'll get that hood. That ain't that ain't no thing. Um, yeah, but uh I was looking at it and there's a little bit of green and white and dirt all over this lower leg and the bottom of the uh, power head, power head bolts and all that and I was like I'm going to take a wire wheel and clean some of that up and then before I move on I think I'm going to pop out them oil, gear oil, drain and fill screws and let's take a look at that Earl. Saw that propeller. Let's take a look at that Earl see what comes out of there and see if it's full of water or if it's black or if it has a magnet um, drain screw in there. Let's see if there's any chips or shavings or anything like that on it. I think that's what my next move better be on this thing. So we're going to get back on the 70 two-stroke VRO in line three. Then I got to show you something else I did. Sort of kind of my fault, but I'm glad it happened now and here rather than later and out there. I'll show you what that is. Let's look. I'm going to move you. All right. See that VRO tank? If you remember looking back at the other video, it had a good, oh, one-third or so of oil in that tank. Well, now that Earl, ooh, look at that mess. I came out here after getting a cup of coffee, and all that oil that was in that jug was now on the floor. And I said, what happened? What happened? Well, I'll try to show you. Let me get you up in there. There we go. Yeah, I come out here and uh, <laughs> so apparently, see what I did? See that broken hose? And how did I just snap like that? I'm not sure. Um, but it goes to a little elbow right under there and that broke so all the oil come out of this elbow and, went bloop. and I don't think that has really anything to do with the pumping of the oil um, it's kind of like a recirculator but anyway it broke right there you can hopefully see the end of that yeah, I think you're in there yeah, it broke right there. It's almost like it was cut, and I don't know. I really don't know how that happened. Um, now the only thing I did, I pushed the air silencer back on, and maybe it just broke. I don't know. But now all the oil's laying on the floor. That's not good. So I got to clean up that mess. Once I get that cleaned up, we'll. Get back on this thing and I'm going to drain that lower unit out. I'll be.
see what this old Earl looking like. But gotta get a couple things real fast. Give me a couple of these sorbent so I don't make already a mess more than I already make a mess and mess and you know and all that. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. All right. Let's get this guy out of there. Get this bottom. See what we got. Oh, look at that. There is some little chips on the end of that magnet and that oil. See them? I don't know if it'll focus on that or not. There's a little chip or two on there. On the old magnet. But the oil don't look full of water or nothing. It looks like mostly just really nasty oil. There, I got the vent screw out. Um, actually looks pretty good. I mean, it's mostly just good black crude oil looking gear oil. Which, that's a good thing. If it comes out looking like coffee creamer, that's, that's what you don't want. So, all right, wind. Now, can you see how all this is all jagged? I think while I'm down here, same with some of this here, I'm gonna go ahead and take Diablo and cut that straight, grind it a little bit. You, you know, make it look a little better. Damn. Yeah. So, I'm gonna let that drain for a little bit and I'll be back. Okay, now, this is my engine. I own it. And since I do, and since I know that this lower unit has been a little on the abuse side, I drained oil out of it, and now I'm going back up with fresh oil, but I put my top vent screw back in because what I'm going to do is give just a couple good shots of Lube Plate 105 engine assembly grease into this lower unit. Just because I know it's been hit. So I'm just going to take that out real quick and then I'm going to have to loosen my vent screw back up. Take it back out, whatever. You know, you know. There we go. There it goes. Now I'm going to put just a good couple squishes in there. Oh, the lubri plate. Even though ah, it had the, uh, dirty oil in there. Now this hack here, this hack here, okay. Ooh. Now we got some lube plate in there. If you want to look up where I get this from, oh, a lot of these old timers out there. And you say, they ain't much older than you. Well, there's some out there. Um, look up, if you're interested, Duckworth. And on the older 
split lower units. He said he knew a lot of old timers that did that. And I've done it on a lot of lower units. Now I'm going back to pumping the uh, 80 90 weight gear oil in there. But yeah, that hack there about putting a little bit of luber plate in there, it ain't going to hurt anything. And if a little water does get in, it's still going to help protect those gears, bearings. And there comes my oil out there. Now you want to get slow at this point and get them bubbles out. See them bubbles? You want to keep, keep pushing. Have your rags ready. And just push a little more to get most of that air out of there. There we go. She's looking pretty good right there. That's got a good flow to it. So let's get that out of there and get my top screw back in. Okay. What I do my screw down. Did everybody have a good Halloweeny? The little goblins come and get you? Did the little goblins come and get you? Alright, now I've showed this hack before. Um I mean, but there might be some newcomers here. So for the new folks who haven't seen this hack, I got a big blob of nice cold Vaseline right there. I keep it in my refrigerator. Nice and cold and thick. Sorry about the dirt bike. So what I do is when I get ready to pull the fill out of here, get that Vaseline in there, in that hole. That way you don't have very much run out. So that's how you do that if you haven't seen that hack. I know I've showed it before. I, there, get in there. Because you don't want your Earl. Where's my screwdriver? And if you like me, you can't keep up with your tools. Well, you know. You know. Come on. There we go. That just helps keep a little bit more oil in there. Okay. So. We got the Earl all in there with a little bit of Lubri Plate 105 in there, and I got a customer pulling up. So. <sighs> Mr. Everly!
I'm low. What's left of somebody's trailer? An old drift boat. <laughs> This is Anton Larson Bay. Um, here on Kodiak, you have to go, I don't know, 30 miles or so from town to get here. And there's a dock down there, and a lot of people use this place. There is a boat launch over here. A lot of people who live in the remote villages use this place. Uh, as a starting out point. You put your boat, trailer, or whatever else you got out here and you're taking a risk though. Some people don't seem to care. There's your fishing poles and everything else. It's an old, yeah, old Starcraft here. Yeah, with a Yamaha two-stroke or 115 on it. Here's some guys coming in from deer hunting, I would imagine. A lot of people trailer their bigger boats over here and actually launch them here and then leave out of Anton Larson Bay to the more remote parts of the island. They head out that way, a few miles, and then opens up into Cooper Runoff Strait, and from there, you can get real remote. Yeah, he's full Starcraft with a 115 Yammy Precision Blend. Yeah, 
you can see looking at the trailer coming over that mountain pass to get here over the Anton Larson Pass it's hell on a trailer the roads full of potholes what we got here what we got what we got I don't know what that is but that trailer that <laughs> That'd be a tongue-heavy rig here. 85 Yammy. 25 Evan Rude backup. Old hand laid up boat looks like. He left his tool bag open. It's got a lot of potential there. It's probably not too heavy of a boat. Uh, ain't got no winders in front, no numbers, none of that. Been patched a few times. Now here's a nice trailer. That's what you need for coming over that pass there. Or that would work. And then some people, I think, who have an old boat that they just need to get rid of. They find their way out here too. There is a chunk of trailer kind of under it. <laughs> An old fiber form. Yeah. Fiber form. Does it have an engine? I think it does up under all that plastic or whatever. Nice boat in its day for sure. Jet boat. Hamilton jet. The old Sea Raider. That is about a hokey kicker bracket. If that's what that was, might have been a license plate. Yeah. I think she's kind of here to stay. You know, you could take an old boat like that, take that jet out, build you a big jack plate on the back of it, hang a couple or even one nice big new four stroke on that and uh, have a pretty good seaworthy vessel. And we got a 30 Nissan on a nice aluminum skiff. And here's the boat launch itself. And some folks bringing in a big one. Red yeah. Red Who's that? Ah. Y'all getting some hot and doing some hunting or? Oh, okay. No, I'm just out for a ride. There's a way to do it. Just drive it right up on there.
that ramp's really nice it's all heck it's better than the, the main ramp downtown nice boat got a nice hauling boom for hauling your crab pots or deer or whatever yeah Okay, I've had uh, a couple of inquiries about my the stand I was using for uh, when I was working on the tilt motor and so forth. Well, there it is. I have a couple of these. I don't know who makes them. Um, all I can tell you is uh, how they work. I bought out a couple of uh, outboard shops over the years, and I got these with them. Um, they are very handy. I think they were used for like displaying outboards, but you can see on the top here, you can see there's rubber in there. You just take the uh, cav plate and slide in there, and then right here you've got a wing nut, any kind of nut, and you tighten it up right there, and that mashes it and holds it there by the cav plate. And then down here, the skeg goes into here, and then you would just take your nut and washer. Once you slide the skeg in, you put that there, and you tighten those two bolts. And that, then you just squish the skeg in there real good with those two bolts, and it'll clamp it. It's got rubber in there too. So that's what they look like. Um, and they are very handy for working on, you know, if you're working on the transom innards or whatnot. Um, but that's, you could easily build that. I mean, there's really nothing to it. Just a, a conduit bender and some pipe. A little bit of a one eighth inch, one eighth inch flat stock metal and, and a handful of nuts and bolts. And uh, you could build that. But th they do, they... Uh, I think I've had at, at least up to a, I think I had a 130 or 115 clamped in one, and, and they're quite stable because um, they have that nice big footprint um, right there that, that fans out on the bottom. So they work really good, and like I said, it wouldn't be nothing to really build something like that, but that's all it is. is a uh, couple of places to grab hold of the skeg and the fin, the cap plate fin, and clamp it down tight, and you got it. So, I don't know who makes them. Like I said, I got a couple of them around here um, that I acquired through buying uh, some going out of business outboard shops over the years. That was many years ago, so. Um, I've got one in my conics there, and they're real handy for working on the some of the larger lower units. You just clamp that lower unit in in there, and then you can uh, you know service the water pump and stuff like that, and it holds it good for you to do water pump, water pump impeller replacements, that kind of thing. But uh, I've got a, a couple other lower unit holders, but uh, these work really good for like those 75 70 lower units 100 horsepower lower units just slide them in there and give them nuts a quick clamp and now you got where you can work on your lower unit really good so there they are oh you see my plums it's almost Halloween don't they look sad they're still the size of little olives. And it's sad because there's quite a few of them on there, but we just didn't have the heat. If you look around up in there, there's there's quite a few in there. But they, they ain't gonna ripen at all. <laughs> so sad. Yeah, so I looked around on the ground, and this is what happens. And we had our first really good frost last night. You can see they just turned brown. 
and then they just drop off. And that windstorm that we had come through that them surfers like so much, it actually snapped some branches off and that's what my little plummies look like. They don't even look like plums, they look like olives. Speaking of them twin Johnsons, ain't they pretty? All right, well, we got that lower unit cosmetically kind of straightened out. Um, and we got the uh, gear oil changed out of it. And now I got to go out in my propeller pile. I think I took a prop off an old 60 that came in here that had uh, thrown a rod. And I should have that prop. I don't know that it's going to fit it. This is a 15 spline. And uh, I'm not sure what that one is. But also, if you look up under there, I got my tank full now. And I replaced that hose. This was it that broke. It broke right there at that nipple. So I replaced that and got ties on it. And you can see there's my full line. She's full of good old TCW3 two-stroke oil. So we're coming along with it. All righty. Let me get you over here. And over there and everywhere all right now next step I do need to button up those wires get the uh, electronics cover plate on I still got to figure out a tilt switch for this thing but uh, here is the bracket like I said, I only had one, but that's what it looks like. That will go on to this piece right there. You can see that's what's left of one, and that's what's left of the other. So that little bolt hole right in the middle will go right there, and that'll give a place for those pins to go into. Then I'll have to make the bottom one, which don't look too hard. It's just a little... I may not be able to do that funnel thing, but I'll get close. So, we've got that to do, and get it where we can put the hood back on the thing, get the wires buttoned up, and a few other things. You understand. But, the old Merc, 1988 three-cylinder oil injection is coming along just fine and uh, still won't know about that lower unit for sure until we get it on the back of a boat so we'll have to arrange that but uh, it's getting a little bit late and this video is getting a little bit long so that's gonna be a wrap on this one that is one more hack coming to you from Kodiak thanks for watching Please like and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.